Rochester Mayor Lovely Warren has agreed to resign. It's part of a plea deal announced just hours ago. We have team coverage for you on this tonight. Christian Garzon is live outside the Monroe County Courthouse right now to break this all down. Alex Love is also standing by with more on the two other staff members charged in this case. And Eric Hedekost will join us later with what presumptive new mayor Malik Evans has to say. Let's go to Christian first. He spoke with Mayor Warren's attorney. Christian, what can you tell us? Well, Jack, this was hours of back and forth today, trying to reach an agreement in all of this. Now, in this misdemeanor plea deal, Warren and two others pleaded guilty to election law violations. Also worked into this deal, those charges from May of criminal possession of a firearm and endangering the welfare of a child against Mayor Lovely Warren. With her guilty plea, the judge says Warren will waive her right to a trial by jury. The assistant DA said they were well prepared to take this to trial. He talked about some of the conditions related to this. We'll hear from him in just a minute. We did ask about the severity of the resignation as punishment, asking if it was really that big of a deal since the mayor was due to leave office anyway on January 1st. Her lawyer says she wants to ensure a smooth transition, so she's staying on until December 1st. Warren's attorney said he wanted to be clear. There is no missing money here. All the contributions were all reported to the Board of Elections. The problem, he says, is mistakes were made as to where money was reported to be deposited. In all of this, her lawyer says Warren is a fighter. The resignation agreement, tough. Done, though, she says, for her daughter. Her lawyer talked about those charges from May relating to the gun possession and endangering the welfare of a child. We know the mayor is not a drug dealer. We know the mayor uh, isn't a gun-toting person uh, who is irresponsible and doesn't look after, after her child. Uh, moreover, she is that person who looks after her child and is concerned for her child. For all three, it's the same as it would be for any other conditional discharge. Uh, no new arrest, um, you know, staying out of trouble, abiding like a normal citizen would be, really staying out of any sort of trouble. Now, a handwritten letter of resignation is due in from Mayor Lovely Warren later this evening. Live in Rochester, Christian Garzone, News 8. Jack, right back to you. Christian, thank you. Under this agreement, Warren will still retain her law license. Now let's turn to Alex Love. Alex, there were two other staff members charged in this case. They signed on to the plea deal. We are hearing from their attorneys tonight. Alex, what can you tell us? Absolutely, Jack. The two other parties charged alongside Mayor Warren were, was Rosalind, Rosalind Brooks Harris as well as Albert Jones. They, they both pleaded guilty to election law violations as well. Their lawyers were satisfied with the plea agreement and agreed signing on was the best move. They believe the conditions in this plea agreement were appropriate for these, for these matters and not surprised. A Class E felony is the, late, is the, is the le, least, excuse me, is the least serious type of felony charges. It was after the mayor signed on to the plea agreement, Jones and Brooks Harris Harris wanted to move forward themselves to settle the case. They claim their clients accidentally did this out of negligence and gained no money from the donations, even though those coming from the packs of the campaign exceeded the legal amount by over $20,000. So this is not a situation where I would say it's a surprise at all. With people with no record, we're talking people that are in their 70s and 50s with no criminal record. There's no money lost here. You hear anything about restitution. There's no money missing. These guys just made mistakes and added up to a violation of the election law. Now, the hearing did drag on for a few hours longer than these two parties wanted it to because the mayor had more at stake when it came to signing on to the plea deal, meaning she had to resign. Both attorneys for Brooks, Harris, and Jones said that they had nothing more to get to gain because they did not gain any money when it came to this matter, and they're ready to put this behind them. Live outside the Hall of Justice, Alex Love, News 8. Alex, thank you. Let's continue our team coverage here with Eric Cost. The presumptive new mayor of Rochester, Malik Evans, spoke just hours ago. Eric what did he have to say? Well, Jack Evans made it clear he's still learning all the details of what happened in court today and process ev processing everything. His priority right now is how can we move Rochester forward and turn a new page? Remember, Evans is also still a city council member. He says they're going to continue working with administration in the days to come with residents being the main focus. He says the city can't let this news distract from several issues at hand right now. From violence to poverty, we need to focus and work to change. 
what, what I'm happy to do is to continue to work with the residents in the city of Rochester and everyone that wants to work to uh, make our um, city strong. And I think that that is what we all have to do um, together. I think all of us in this room and, and those that are not in this room have an obligation to work to ensure that we build a strong city. Um, our, a strong city is not just dependent on me or you or others. It's us collectively. Now, we also asked Evans if he had any reaction to the penalty Mayor Warren is facing a year of conditional discharge. He said he had no comment. For now, live in Rochester, Eric Cost, News 8. Eric thank you. And as the evening continues, we're receiving more reaction from local lawmakers, including Monroe County Legislator Rachel Barnhart. Barnhart has run against Warren for mayor in years past. A statement released earlier says, quote, our democracy depends on fair elections. Both of lovely Warren's opponents raised the issue in 2017 and were ignored. Public corruption cannot be tolerated, and we have a lot of work to do at the state and local level to ensure ethical conduct. For starters, we need a New York State Board of Elections that enforces the law. I am glad to see a resolution that includes accountability. That is Monroe County Legislator Rachel Barnhart speaking there. As more in this story continues to develop, we have the latest information over on our website, rochesterfirst.com.